Gosh, I'm in a little loose woman sandwich. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. How are you, Janet? Very well. I, I got your name right this time, which yes. is good. Yes. Did you get that wrong last time? Janice, he called her. No. <laughs> and you live and you live to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I think, I think you must like me, Janice. <laughs> Is it really true you put shower caps on your feet in hotels? <laughs> yes. What hotels are you staying in, Janice? Exactly. Yeah. That you need to do that. I've stayed in some very dodgy hotels. Oh, you must have done. Why don't you yeah. my slippers? Yeah, don't they give you slippers? You don't want to carry slippers, especially when you're travelling. They but no. And do you know that if you've got dyed hair, girls. <laughs> you very dare you, rain, Janet. A shower hat's really handy. Don't you ever you wear... You wear them out in the rain in Of course, the I'm hiking, I wear a oh, shower no. hat. What's this? <laughs> this is about you, less about There's you, it's not rambling. your interview. So you, know, you could be rambling. <laughs> there are members God. of the public that could see Janet Street Porter in a field <laughs> with, with a shower, shower cap on. Head. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask you a legal question about that? By the way, you what, can't illegal... talk. What have you had on your head when you're in court? A wig, now and again. <laughs> They can blow up the picture for the commitment proceedings. Uh, legally, are we allowed to take things from hotel rooms like that? Uh, generally speaking, you are, because um, if they're usable, then yeah. um, they're meant to be taken away. That doesn't mean you can take the duvet. No. Um, <laughs> you haven't done that, have you? Never. No. <laughs> Never. Or the towel. If they leave a notice, you can't t uh, take it. So, for example, the toweling robes very often get stolen. But generally, they'll leave yeah. a little tag saying, don't take them. You don't go rambling in a toweling robe, do you, Janet? No, 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 no. She will now. So yeah. the things, the things, these are the things that will be in your book. Mm. Uh, Judge Rindor, may I call you Robert? Or you if Judge you Rinder's Rinder's you Robert. Uh, Robert's got a book out Judge called fine. Rinder's Rules, Make the Law Work for You. That's so right. is this all, it's kind of everyday things, legal problems it's that people have? problems that we all have. So um, everybody at some point, lots of your viewers, everybody here at some point would have had an issue with a hotel that we're talking about today. Lots of issues about holidays that have gone yeah. horribly wrong. The consumer things. Divorces, yeah. consumer things. Everybody at some stage would have had a legal issue. And I write about very funny cases, but also try to empower everybody to say look if you've got a legal problem be confident know your rights and deal with a small case yourself and yeah. get it right you know a lot of the time one of the problems people face is that they get terribly angry they don't feel sufficiently equipped to go and argue themselves mm. and what's worse is very often people get really angry with the wrong person mm. yeah so yes. they end up screaming on the phone to some poor person in a call center in Calcutta they put the phone down having had their meltdown and they've done no good yeah mm. so this is a funny way because the stories are really hilarious. Let, let me give you a story. Uh, all right, here is, here's from, the is scenario. It, is it from the book? No. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> this is a new one, huh? Oh, yeah. Sorry. So, She's giving you a problem. I'm giving you a problem for you to solve. All right. I used to have a restaurant, right? Now, we had two couples in the restaurant, and mm -hmm. they ate Sunday lunch. They had a starter, a main course, and a pudding. Was it good? Yes. They ate the meal, and we went to get the payment. They said, we're not paying. And we said, why? They said, we didn't like it. Did they so eat the whole thing? I said, where's the food? And they said, we ate it. And I said, well, that's ridiculous. Now, who's right? Well, um, like, this is a lawyer's answer. It depends. I mean, uh -huh. generally speaking, if they've eaten the food and you've provided a decent service, they should pay for it. Um, but a lot of the time, and I, I'm going to turn the question around, because, you know, very often, the thing I find really surprising is if you bought a T-shirt for £20 that was horrible and had holes in it, you'd take it back. But it's, I find it constantly surprising that you're served up food that looks like sort of some regurgitated horror. Oh. Yet because we're... <laughs> British. I think it's generally a kind of British like instinct. Well people don't complain. I think, and the answer most people give is because they're terrified what's going to happen in the kitchen. Mm. Nothing is going to happen in the kitchen. Yeah. The answer is... Yeah. <laughs> Well, hang on a minute. You're about to make a little... <laughs> I love this. Now, bearing in mind you have a right to silence and you may be about to make a criminal admission. <laughs> <laughs> when you ran your restaurant... Are yes. you saying, let, let, let's... I'll be the customer for a moment. Are you sitting right. up straight? Good. No. <laughs> I don't like the food, it's cooked horribly and it tastes like rubber. You take it back, what happens in the kitchen? You're saying you once did something awful. Tell us well, no, I no, no, just say Remember I can I smell just... a lie like a fart in a right? restaurant? Right, I just <laughs> that the chef might drop something in your food and send it back. Or they might sprinkle it with something. Accidentally cough over it. Cough over it, yes. sneeze I, over it, I, I or something. I don't know, I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> I'm just saying... It may have happened. It may have happened, who knows? <laughs> this, this restaurant, you said you used to have a restaurant. Yes, I don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, people always say, are you a real judge? 
Yeah, I've been practicing for a long time, so the, 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 I'm an arbitrator, mm. and um, the cases are completely real, which is why people yeah. ask that question. And I can understand why they do, because the cases are sometimes dramatic, but the rulings are real and they're final, so the parties contract and agree to, for me to hear their case as opposed to having it in the mm. small claims court. You've been so people need not to worry. No. You've been a barrister for 15 years. Yeah, I know. It's a very stuffy profession, so what? Always. Not all. No, no, no. you are. Some but of you're us a are bit a of a one-off. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do your, uh, what do other barristers say about you? To my face, Janet. <laughs> well, what do you think they say I behind think your back? No, it's a good question. I think that the reality is that I've been practicing for a long time, doing very serious cases, some of which you can can read about. A lot of. Uh, people here and a lot of you will have commented on some of the cases that I was part of and had defended or prosecuted mm. in and because I've been doing serious work for a long time because mm. of colleagues I know and are close to are are good at what they do generally speaking they've been nice about the program because it's authentic good. Yeah. because yeah. the rulings are real and I use real legal principles they're happy there's a lot of things you can do to keep yourself vibrant and it really is about vibrancy yeah and it's about curiosity it's about how you take care of yourself it's about how you uh, experience joy yeah. And um, and and you wash your face every night. Yeah. <laughs>